Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary Austin, in the past hearings, the Department of Defense has made it clear to me that the extension of H-2B visas is needed to meet the Department of Defense construction requirements in Guam and the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas. Inclusive of ensuring that the deadline to accomplish the completion of construction of this Marine Corps base, Camp Ben Bloss, which will house over thousands of uh, Marines from Okinawa, which is which as a Marine Corps base has never been built in the last 70 years, inclusive of this, you know, to meet this deadline, currently by statute, the Guam CNMI H2B extension ends at the end of 2024. Secretary Austin, I have two questions with this. First, would the failure to extend the H2B create a risk that, cr that critically Department of, Department of Defense construction projects fall behind schedule or go uncompleted? Yes, yeah, you know, sir, this, uh, this construction on Guam is critical to us in terms of what we're trying to do to uh, provide for the defense of Guam, but also make sure that we have the right uh, infrastructure to support our efforts uh, in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, we need uh, those workers to, uh, to be able to uh, complete that construction. So the HBTU visa program is really important to us. And I would ask that uh, you know, we get continued support from Congress on this issue because uh, it is important to our defense. All right, secondly, uh, Secretary Austin, um, I, I, you've actually answered it. You support the extension of the H2B for Guam, which would mirror the completion of the construction of Camp Loss, which is scheduled for 2029. Yes. Thank you. Uh, on another note, uh, Secretary Austin, I understand that uh, my Guam Rear Admiral, Admiral Nicholson, has submitted a waiver to your office to stop the reduction of overseas cost of living allowance, OCOLA, on Guam, and that the waiver is with the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Hicks. Um, Secretary Austin, please, yes or no, the reduction of OCOLA is driven by the department policy and not by law. That's correct. Considering that Guam is at the tail end of the supply chain and that the cost of living for both service members and the island's residents has skyrocketed over the years due to many factors, Secretary Austin, would you support keeping OCOLA status quo versus the reduction which was recently implemented? I'll have to look at the specifics of this particular uh, uh uh, issue. Uh, there are a number of uh, places where uh, COLA is being reduced, and and certainly as a deputy secretary, has worked through this, I'll, I'll uh, engage with her and see what the, what the issues really are and what what is what's in the realm of the possible. You know, it's uh, again, we're doing everything we can to provide uh, as much value to our our troops and our family members as possible. Pay raises, uh, reduction of. Uh, prices in the commissary, uh, and so, uh, so forth and so on. So, so this is important to us. I appreciate that, uh, Secretary Austin. And it's also important to our Rear Admiral Nicholson. Uh, so I'm hoping that this decision will be rendered on the waiver request uh, submitted as soon as possible, please. Okay. And finally, Secretary Austin, on the provision of public law 117263, which is the 2023 National Defense Authorization Act, it mandated a 60-day timeline for the Department of Defense to con contract for an independent assessment of the integrated air and missile defense architect in Guam. This is vital component for the defense of Guam and is very important for assessment of my district and community. The timeline expired earlier this month. Was a contract issued for the independent assessment? And if not, does the Department of Defense intend on pursuing this mandate which was created by statute. And once again, this is very important for my community. Thanks, sir. I agree it is important, and the contract will be, uh, be let uh, by the end of the month. 